This week, Nelson and I discuss our sticks of the week. We have, of course, we have reviews and commentary with integrity. And Nelson has some news, breaking news. I'm so excited when you come, Nelson, because we have... Uh, a lot of news to discuss. That didn't sound too good. Uh, anyway, uh, Stogie Geeks episode 347 starts right now. <laughs> this is a Security Weekly production. Broadcasting live from G-Unit Studios in Rhode Island, it's the show where cigars burn slow, ashes fall fast, and cocktails flow steady. It's the Stogie Geek Show. Welcome everyone to the Stogie Geek Show. Joe and I are already silly. Oh yeah. yeah. Joe Josepa, aka Joe Hollywood is here with me in studio. I'm fired up. So we also have remote Drew, who is remote over in Texas. Look at you, you got some Stogie Geek swag going on in the background. Got my banner. Where are you? Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm all set up for the uh, Stogie Geek uh, mobile lounge. Confidence. Confidence isn't walking into a room with your nose in the air, thinking you're better than anyone else. It's walking into a room and not having to compare yourself to anyone in the first place. Havana Cigar Club, located in Warwick, Rhode Island, is a great place to enjoy a drink and a cigar. Stogie Geeks listeners can find a $5 off coupon on our website by clicking the HCC logo. Cigars, perfected for more than 150 years. Yours to enjoy now. Stogie Geeks! You might want to uh, replay that intro. I probably should have used a little bit more uh, semicolons. Some grammar. And, uh, pronunciation. Nelson, I love it when you come in studio! Hey! And you're here. That's right. Finally, after taking a couple weeks off. And a couple weeks off, went up to New Hampshire. I might talk a little bit about that yeah, little honey hole do. I found. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nelson, Nel- <laughs> Nelson found a cigar shop of, uh, do you know so-and-so? I'm like, yeah, I met him. That's like so three years ago. Everybody but knows Joe. Everybody knows Joe because Joe has integrity. And that's that's uh, that's what's what it's important. all about. That's what it's all important. And, you know, and, and, and yeah, they're, they're super cool. Can't wait to hear about that uh, trip. Uh, there, Story Geeks. This is episode 347. I cannot believe that. Um, I was reviewing some old footage with Nelson. Uh, he came in the studio a couple hours before, uh, and we were going through some stuff. Story Geeks, I want to encourage you go to stogiegeeks.com and, and, and type in uh, uh, episode 315, where Drew and I were going back and forth and uh, talking about the past decade of cigar aficionados top two or three for the past decade and over the years and whatnot the commentary going back and forth there i think was 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 super cool it was great um there and then uh johnny jumped into the mix when he walked into studio about an hour after us to start his day and all that stuff and johnny was bringing up some of the old paul episodes of like story geeks episode 12 it was one there with christian aroa from way before CLE and, and the super cool episode. So um, they're all there on uh, stogiegeeks.com. You can check those out. Uh, it's it's amazing to see uh, how um, the the show had progressed and all of that type right. of stuff. Right. You know, as yeah. someone who wasn't associated with the show back then, I'll just say it was really cool to see what you said about sticks back then, mm-hmm. you know, and, and <clears throat> versus like what you might say about them today. Yeah. Um, because they were newer then, right? Sure. Sticks that would just come out now, but now they're out forever. Yeah. Um, but it was cool. And, and that's actually motivating me to now go back and watch some of those older episodes too. Right. But what I like specifically about episode 315 is that it, it, it was, again, I was thinking like, wow, we're getting into 2020. Little did I know that 2020 was going to turn into this shit show right. that it is, right? Yeah. 
<laughs> Little do we all know. But, you know, it, it, we were able to recap, like, the past 10 years and talk about, like, cigar progression and 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 the cigar movement and and all of that type stuff and it's super cool. I don't know. Uh, I don't really watch a lot of older episodes of of, of Stogie Geeks because it's in my brain. Like I was here, we did it. Um, I probably should. Uh, a lot of people say you know you watch yourself and improvement and all that stuff. But hey, man, I started in real life, so you get what you get. I am what I am, and. Um, it's super cool to have you uh, on board, and 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 you know uh, I love hearing your news commentary. Drew is busy down in Texas. They got a little bit of a quasi lockdown going on, and he's got tons of meetings before the possible lockdown and all that stuff. And I was like, you know something, take a hiatus and do that there. However, last week, just to bring you up to speed, last week, uh, episode three forty six, Drew and I were out campaigning for our sticks. Um, there, so um, the voting has closed. However, let's have some mail ballots come in because I want to review the results with Drew. So, same rules apply. So, if you watch the show, you just can't click on the link and go vote. Uh, in order for your mail ballot to count, you have to go to uh, email Drew at stogiegeeks.com and joe at stogiegeeks.com and you can vote for one of the following sticks la flora dominicana airbender monte cristo espada oscuro rosado uh noel rojas blue bonnet or the foundation scars um the uh goliath goliath perfecto uh there and um cast a vote via email We'll count that in as write-in ballots. Uh, also, Stogie Geeks, write, pencil in this date. It looks like, and this is Stogie Geek time, so it could always switch. But it looks like December 4th will be our end-of-the-year special where we kind of take some time to reflect on the year of uh, Sticks. And uh, Drew and Nelson now and myself, maybe Paul, who knows, We'll give predictions as to what we expect to come out of the cigar industry um, in 2021 and all of that stuff there. Then we have one more episode, giving you a little bit of programming notes, uh, one more episode on the 11th, and that will uh, be a wrap for uh, 2020 as the way the dates go and all of that stuff with, with programming. Um, that'll be that, and then we'll pick it up. The week of the 6th, which will bring us to, I don't know what date that is off the top of my head, but I'll let you know next day, that 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 Friday, and then away you go, and then we'll continue on with uh, Stogie Geeks for 2021. Um, very excited to um, talk to some potential sponsors on 2021, and there will be some programming changes, but lo and behold, uh, we will be here, and... Uh, some people won't like that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you said something, Joe. If, I don't know if you're you're done, but I wanted to go back to something you just said. I'm never done. All Johnny right. tells me when I'm done. All right. But other enough. than that, you go. <laughs> no, you, well, you had said something about the last 10 years, whatever. And it's it's. I, I actually like your thoughts because I was thinking the other day, you know, in, in the, I want to say late 90s, there was the whole, you know, everyone had a cigar. Everyone wanted a cigar in their hand. Um, kind of like of a cigar boom kind of thing. But now it's almost like it's that, but it's almost like a renaissance almost. And what I mean by that is not more people smoking cigars, more people caring about what they're smoking. Mm. What do you, I don't know if you agree with that or not. Um, so more people are caring about what they're smoking? Like they're, they're geeking out, if you will, a little more. They're becoming more stogie geeks. Mm. Well, I think, I think um, COVID has certainly played a significant role in that, right? I sure. mean, since COVID, there's been 16 new podcasts, cigar podcasts that are out there and whatnot. Yeah. And at the end of the day, um, you know, they're either going to run out of runway room and content and space it out. Fizzle out, yeah. Or, or they're going to pick it up and improve from a technological standpoint and all of that. But COVID has certainly allowed all of us in our own version to at least slow down. Well, I'm I'm a testament to that, and right? And this is a slow down activity. 
Like, you know, you can't uh, train for a marathon. You could. And, and, and oh, you can't, you know, like, the, there's a certain procedure that happens when smoking cigars and doing that there. And so uh, I think COVID had played a significant role. So I, I would agree with you. That allowed people to kind of rekindle what they like, take time out on the internet and search for right. it. Maybe they're on more version of a lockdown than others and all of that type of stuff. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, I was distracted because you said procedure and you're holding the snips. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's got the scissors. I'm into my pompous cigar. Kind of freaked me out a little bit. I'm, I'm really into my pompous cigar uh, scissors here. Uh, I'm enjoying them thoroughly from Pardo Cigars. Pardo Cigars. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So what have you been smoking? Or do you want to do that? No, nah, let's get into what have you been smoking. Let's do that. Sure. Well, you know, that that's going to lead right into our, our breaking news. But um, I'm actually smoking it right now. This is, I don't know, probably the 10th one I've smoked this year. Um, the Placencia Alma Fuerte Generacion Salomon, uh, V. Salomon. Um, it's made by Placencia. It's from their Alma Fuerte series. Um, there's other ones, the Del Campo. Uh, I always forget the other one. Help me out. Fuego. Del Fuego. Um, but this... Reserva. Pa- this particular... Cosecha 146. Yes. Go for it. Outstanding. Um, this particular Vitola, though, the, the Salomon, I fell in love with. Um, it's a Nika Pudo. It's, um, it's about 20 bucks, so it's not the, the cheapest stick, but it is a very good stick. Um, it took me... First time I smoked one of these, I think it took me two and a half hours to get through it. So it, it wasn't uh, set aside some time for this sucker, is what I'm saying. Um, on the cold draw, I got an earthy leather note on it, um, which made me excited. It, it really, I'm like, this thing smells kick ass. I can't wait to light this sucker up. Um, the body of it, I don't know, if folks, you, you don't see too many Solomons out there. Mm. Um, it's not like it's not like a Toro Robusto, you know. It's 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 not unique either, but you don't see tons of brands putting these out. But it's a super cool looking. Oh my god, I said super cool. I got to stop hanging out with you. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a really cool looking body on it. Um, you know, it's tapered. It's got a little nipple on the foot. Yes, I said nipple. Um, nice. But this <laughs> this thing is great. Um, after lighting it, I got some coffee, leather. I know people say espresso. I just say coffee. I got some coffee notes on it. And dry fruit, dry fruit kind of thing. Yes. I, I wasn't sure how to describe it. It was like, it was like a dry fruit uh, flavor I got. And that pretty much maintained throughout the stick. So I don't know if that means it's less complex. I mean, however you want to look at it. But it was, it was pretty consistent throughout um, long smoke, like I said. Perfect burn, zero touch-ups, zero. This mm. thing is well constructed. Um, didn't unravel, like I said, no no touch-ups. A little bit, it, it got a little different at the end. I got a little bit of pepper at the end, uh, but nothing too harsh or or, or too um, too strong. But uh, that continue of that coffee slash espresso dry fruit uh, notes. Um, like I said, set aside time for this. Um, this is not one. I don't recommend smoking this and then relighting it and smoking it. You're going to ruin it. Um, and I do do that myself. I don't recommend that if it's a Robusto or a little Chico. Right. Well, I, I do it. I, I admit I do it on some sticks. Like if I'm in the garage. Don't be reviewing sticks to do that. It, it it does stale out. No, 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 no. I don't do that on sticks I review. Sticks and, I review, I me, smoke to the nub. And for me, that's a good point, right? Because sometimes, um, you know, it, it gets, it's like, wow, like. You know, I, I enjoy the stick, but oh, I got to go run a quick errand and you'll go in and you'll put it out and, and, and you'll put it out and then you relight it. And it's just not the same. It's it, definitely not. The it same. does stay a lot. Yep. And that's why um, previous episodes and I'm so like in my mental Rolodex of previous episodes. Yep. Where I always say like when people ask me like my my favorite stick, it's like uh, give me a region and how much time I have. Right. Mostly how much time I have. Right. Because uh, to me. It stales out within 45 minutes. No, that's true. I have, you know, favorite morning, afternoon, evening, late night, 
there's definitely different stick depending on the situation. Driving, if you're driving. Late night smoke. Like, I it, have not had a late night smoke in two years and two months since my son <laughs> has been born. I'm exhausted. But anyway. <laughs> like this placentia, I would not smoke this in the car because there's no way I'm going to smoke this in the time of a drive unless I'm driving to the other side of the country. That's the only way I can make this happen. Um, so great smoke production. Um, like I said, it went it went all the way through. The draw was a little tight, um, not so tight that I didn't enjoy it. It was it was good. You know, you don't want too loose, too tight. But uh, it was a little tighter than I normally like. Um, but honestly, I smoked this thing, and the the first time I smoked this, I bought a box the next day. So for me, this is a box worthy cigar because I literally bought a box of these suckers the next day. Yeah, I would agree with that assessment totally. Um, the, to me, those are like ultimate, um, maybe potentially, pending as to how you smoke your cigars, uh, celebratory moments if you're not like a frequent flyer of cigars, meaning if you're not at like three a day, right? It was a celebratory weekend, got more time to relax, Definitely. fire pit, you know what I mean? Play your guitar in a park, whatever the heck you want to do uh, there, go fishing, go golfing you know when you when you have at least a, a little bit over an hour and a half or two or three believe it or not i've gone it's taken me it, it, it's a sit back and relax cigar uh to me right the size you mentioned the size it's it's not unknown in an an odd size it's not like a frequent no, it's a seven by know, 58 right seven by 58 it's gonna take some time to smoke but it's celebratory, right? And I, when I was doing my initial re reviews in the beginning of 2020 on that, and I'm glad that we were able to like grab my opinion and Drew's opinion, and then ironically, it's amazing how that worked out with Placencia. We can circle back and get your opinion on all of these smokes too, right? It, it's always like a, you know, it's a, if you grab the, Cons the Cosecha 146, you know, that could be an everyday smoke. It's super cool. To me, that's my favorite of the line um but that is like a i need to chill ultimate chill go for it size and relax and then there yeah. my add is kicking in nelson no, i got the, the, i got red wine <laughs> we have belvini <laughs> and we have bloody mary and i'm like it's a true Shit. story i'm really enjoying like this whole combo this is not a bad thing. This is this is a very bad thing. This is a, this is a very bad bad. It depends where you're sitting. Bad thing, you know. <laughs> but it, you know, it's funny you say that. The first time I smoked one of these was at a fire. I was sitting yep. at my buddy's house. I'm like, let me grab that sucker out of my humidor. I brought it over. I knew I had time. Now, little did I know, I had no idea I was going to go two hours. <laughs> no freaking sure. idea. Um, but it was it was awesome, especially sitting around the fire shooting. The, Shooting the breeze with your buddy. You can uh, say shit. Oh yeah, shooting the shit with my buddy. <laughs> um, it, it it was great. It was it was just a, a great great smoke. And like I said, it's you know it's twenty bucks, but and if you buy a box, it's a little cheaper than the twenty bucks. But right, totally worth it. Um, right. So I, glad I bought the box. Don't not one regret on smoking the sucker. Sure, because of the price and and the nostalgic value of the size to me, I gave it a box split with a friend. You know, you got a friend you go golf and win a lot, or go fishing win a lot, or hang out at fire pit a lot, or if you have, you know, if you have couples and whatnot, Saturday yeah. night hanging out doing all of that. Super cool box split there. Box split with a friend was oh. my rating, but only for that reason. One last footnote with this. Okay. The other super cool thing, the box turns into an ashtray. Yes. So you get a pretty cool, and it's not like shitty. It's, no. You get a nice Placencia ashtray out of the box, so that that was cool. Mm. Like that in itself, I'd pay thirty, fifty bucks for that thing all day. It's it's metallic, uh, it's got a metallic center to it with the Placencia logo on it. It's black. It's it's awesome. So you get a, a nice ashtray out of it too. Fanboy, <laughs> a little bit, a little bit. It's okay, a little it's bit. Cool, it's cool. I admit when I'm a fanboy, I, 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 a little bit. Uh, I'm a Dunbarton guy. I'm just saying, I'm a Dunbarton. Guy. But these, really? I gotta say, oh yeah. There you go. Cool. Well, uh, um. Yeah. Breaking news? What? That's Placentia? What? I got breaking news. That's not breaking. It's breaking yesterday. <sighs> you want to do that already? Man, you oh, I don't know if you wanted to go right into it. Go right into it, Nelson. You know? Well, not knock yourself out. We're on the topic. I don't know. Next week, your host is Nelson, and I will be co-host. It'll be awesome. <laughs> this guy. 
this guy. <laughs> Uh, well, speaking of placenta. Prepare a show. Speak. I'd love you to take that duty off of me. Go for it. No, never. It's never <laughs> happening. I'd love to just show up and have some sticks ready and, and you know, it's cool. Go for it. We're on the topic anyway. Oh, yeah. Speaking of cigars, I want to talk to you speaking about Speaking of Gurkha. cigars, no, I'm, I'm going to tell you about cigars. No, Placentia came out with a press release yesterday. Um, I call this good and bad news in my opinion, but, mm. Right. I don't know if you're thinking the same thing. Ah, I'm, I like it. And as you know, we don't do any show prep on the news. I, I like to, to find out what Nelson's going to say and, or Drew or any or host, co-host or whichever. So, um, it's better that way. I, I think it is. It's natural. It's integrity. It's what the show's all about. Okay, give us the news. Placencia. Yes. They announced yesterday they're coming out with the Year of the Ox in honor of 2021 being on the Chinese uh, calendar, calendar, Year of the Ox. It's going to be coming out in February next year. Uh, the caveat to this is it will not be available in the U.S. It's only available in international markets. They haven't announced where um, other than not here, so not in the U.S. Um, and it's funny, Joe talks about cigar hunters, uh, cigar chasers. Chasers. Right. That's going to be me in 2021. If you're going to talk, if you're going to use a Joe lingo. I know. It's stick chasers. Get it right. Stick chasers. Stick chasers. I am a stick chaser. So yes. if you tell me it's hard to get, I'm going to try to get it. So I will be chasing the sucker um, next year 100%. But according to the press, press release, the year of the ox will be a limited brand offered only in a 7x58 Salomon, another one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's exclusive to the international market. It will be a Nicaraguan Pudo as well. It offers a distinctive smoking experience. And um, it's going to be medium strength, full flavored cigar. Full flavored. Full flavored. Uh, they say it has notes of cashews, red berries, and notes of milky chocolate with hints of peppermint. So, again, that, that will be coming out hopefully February 2020, 2021. That's what they announced yesterday. Peppermint. Never heard of peppermint on a stick ever. Atabay, check them out. <clears throat> peppermint? Yes, sir. I've had Atabays. Yeah, they don't. You don't get that. Like I never get peppermint on a cigar, but I wasn't looking for it. So look for it. So what do you think? Thirty-five dollars a cigar. Okay. Uh, I'm excited. I want because I mean, again, literally based on the review I just did with the um, Alma Fuerte, the Salomon Vitola. It's also a Nicaraguan Pudo. I'm expecting it's going to be even better than this. So I'm kind of stoked to get my hands on one of these and try it. Okay. But what were you not too sure about? Remember you started that? Oh, because it's not in the U.S. I was saying it's good news and bad news. It's bad news because you can't get it in the U.S. Mm -hmm. That's what I was saying. That's your only thought on the good news and bad news? Well, that's where I was saying the bad news. The bad okay. news is you can't get it in the U.S. Well, call a shop in a foreign country it's hard and to get. pay for shipping. Hopefully. What the hell is that going to cost with customs? Hopefully. Cash is king. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I'm sure you could find someone to send it over. We will find them. We will find them. It is yeah. limited edition, though. There's only 2,500 boxes. Yeah. Yeah. 2,500 eight-count boxes that they're putting out. So. Yep. When I read the press release, flag came up when, and the same flag is yours, like, why U.S. only? Or not U.S.? Yeah, I'm sorry. Why not U.S.? Thank you. Right, uh, it's a plethora of drinks, or it's <laughs> my boxing stupidity. Either way, right. But I'm glad you guys, you and Drew, keep me in check. So that's great. Right, Paul used to, but he's like a he's like a, a mirage, right? Uh, you know, a, a mythical creature at this point. It's a Sasquatch, right? Um, when it when it, when it's U.S. only two things popped in my head. Number one, volume and size, and and um, the amount they're making and the amount that are going to be available and they know that, because you got to remember, right? The goal is to sell cigars, right? If we can blow through these in the international market, blow through them, right? And sell cigars. And I wonder a couple of things, okay? And this is actually, I wrote it when, I in, when we interview guests I have questions for host, and that's one of my Nesta Placentia questions next time he comes on the show. is, And he comes on annually, sometimes twice a year, you know, every 10 months or so. And I wonder, one of three things happen, okay? 
and this is going to be the question. Number one is if you're only available for would you say twenty five hundred boxes? Twenty eight hundred boxes. Twenty eight hundred boxes. You can go do it. I wonder if they did the U.S. market first when they did the Chinese New Year sticks. Correction, it was twenty five hundred. Yep, I thought so. Right, uh, tw- you know, um, eight count boxes. Yep. If 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 they did the U.S. market and they alternate markets because of the volume. Number two comes in through. Wonder if it's a legal ramification when it comes to Davidoff, who always does uh, year of the and then Chinese New Year's and cre- comes up with the creation every year that's in cadence with Chinese New you know, Year. You know, so I didn't think about the legal, but I did think when I saw the name of the cigar. Oh, I, yeah, yeah. I was like, oh, wow, like Davidoff yeah. already does that. Yeah, well, well not, you know, and, and again, I don't want to go poo-poo on, on, on Placencia. I mean, other people do that too. I mean, right. we, we interviewed Tim Wong, right? His words, not mine, Chinese-American, right? It, it, when he does his Pier 28 cigars, he's announcing something. He had a special blend, and it was supposed to be for this year. And as he said a couple episodes back, um, you know, it got postponed because of COVID, and it just wasn't the right time and all of that stuff there too, right? So it's going to be the year of whatever it is for that. See, for him, with Pier 28 cigars, he's Chinese-American. His word's not mine, Right. It's significant to him when he releases it, when it's that Chinese New Year, and and what that is, right? And so, I don't think that Placentia is really copying them. It's just, I think they, and then my third thing is, they probably could have gotten a little bit more creative with the name, but I'm not in charge of marketing for them. Uh, but that was the first thing I thought of as, as well. So, is there another option where, is it possible, this is a test, right? Is it a marketing test? Put it out in the international market, see how people respond to it. And that, and I don't know if any brand's ever done that, where they just don't do it in the U.S. and they do it internationally. But I, that also did cross my mind, that this was just a marketing test. Put it out there, see if people like it, and then start selling it in the U.S. I don't know if that, that's another possibility. The answer is it's always a test. So whatever you put out in the market, whatever it is that you're smoking or whatever, it's always a test. Okay, so and if you don't believe me, how many things have you bought, for example, for your kids and the product gets recalled for whatever reason? Right. I'm in that zone. So I, I'm going to reflect that. Right. So every time I buy something for my little one, I register online. I do the email for product recalls and whatnot. And two or three things. And my, and, and, and my son's only only two years and two months old. Right. Things have been recalled. Like things that he really used every day. I was like, whoa, that's a crazy, right? And, um, you know, so it's always a test. And, if you know, it always happens, right? We used to like this product as consumers, and now that's no longer available, and there's a new product or whichever. So it's always a test. But that's my next question for Nestor, is that when you came up with, with that concept, and I venture to believe, okay, this is me using my hot, and my mind and all the knowledge that has been bestowed on me from this awesome premium cigar industry, I bet you it's distribution thing and not a legal thing. Could but be. I can venture if you put year of the ox straight up and go out, there would be at least a cease and desist order going on there. Now we all know how those work. And if we don't, I'm not gonna spend an episode on it, but um you know, th- there are some ways around that you can get a cease and desist order, but I don't think it's that. I think, honestly, they came up with a concept. They were brainstorming on a the concept. They only had X amount. Let's try it in the international market. Let's see what's going on. Right. And, and and maybe the international market's doing a little bit better. I mean, you got to remember, the international market is on more of a lockdown than the U.S. market. People are right. smoking more cigars when they're on lockdown and taking more of a time out. Maybe it's just like, you know something? Let's make it available here. Blow out the boxes, sell the boxes, and and and, and, and do a profit and move on. And, and just, just move on. Yeah. Because that's what it's about. Producing a product. I don't care which level of cigar company you're at. You produce a product. It gets sold. That's the idea. Retailers make their share. Distribution makes their share. Shipping, blah, blah, blah. Farm, purchase, out the door, next. 
and that might be a, a better path of least resistance. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they actually put out, you know, maybe in the latter part of 2021, another run of these after they do the initial 2,500 box run. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's, that's all we know right now is that, that they're just, it's limited edition, only 2,500 boxes going out. But yeah, but coming up with a cigar that's named after Chinese New Year, I mean, anybody can do that. I mean, but the way it was colored, the way it was designed, it, it, it walks a fine line for me. If I were on the design team, and just so we know, Story Geeks, outside of my security weekly duties and my Story, Story Geeks duties, I have an advertising agency. If we were at the drawing board table of design, we'd come up with a different concept. That's all I'm saying. Fair enough. And and there you go. But speaking of uh, COVID uh, cracking down and lockdowns, right, um, I've been getting... Uh, um, we're threatening here in Rhode Island to have a potential lockdown again. I know it's been the talk of the town and all of that, and we're all 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 of you story geeks are going through it with your own version, with with your own states. But like our governor is getting pretty peeved at the um, rise of the uh, third wave here of the coronavirus, and you know um, I'm preparing for that. And what does that mean, right? We're locked down, you're in your house. What am I going to have for a cigar? What am I going to get? What am I going to do? I feel Geeks. like you're not going to run out of cigars. <laughs> you want the <laughs> ultimate, the ultimate COVID relief, right? You want a COVID relief cigar? This is for you. This is the Blackwork Studio Killer B. Blackwork Studio Killer B is a 45 by 46 Wrapper is Ecuadorian ma- ma- Ecuadorian Maduro binder and filler on Nicaraguan complexity flavor and balance complexity I give it an 8 flavor and balance I give it a 9 you will be satisfied it's available in one size love the the, the cap of, of, of the wrapper definitely check it out um, it starts off with a blast of pepper then you get notes of wood some chocolate that start to surface um then you start to get a little bit more of black pepper. Very, very present on the retrohale. Um, during the second half, that retrohale gets stronger. The strength is 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 a medium to full. And yes, you will get more pepper. And if you can get past the pepper, if your palate is trained enough, you'll get some notes of wood and cocoa. And of course, more pepper. And what I like about that stick is, you know, when I'm <clears throat> when I'm sitting in in a version of a lockdown, to me, this is like the yeah man. Because did, did did you ever have a cigar and like you feel like you haven't had a cigar? Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. This it's is that cigar. different. Yeah. This is a cigar. You you need one of these and it'll last you through. Like if you're if you're rationing out cigars and doing that, and I look at it like, okay, great. You know, if we're on lockdown and I gotta be with my son and doing that there, and and mom is in healthcare, so she's doesn't matter, right? She's gonna work. Um, and I'm gonna have a cigar. That's what I'm gonna go to. And that was the Black Work Studio Killer Bee. Check it out. What'd you give that? Um, I actually gave this a box split. Box split? Because I can't, I can't hang on a cigar for that long. Yeah. But if 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 we are using integrity and full disclosure, I have smoked more than a box of these sticks. Fair enough. And they go phenomenal with Bloody Marys. What else have you been Arturo smoking? Arturo Fuente. Mm. I think you might be smoking it right now. No, I was. I, you finished I, I, it. I finished it. Well, I'm going to be talking about the Arturo Fuente Florfina Rosado Sun Grown. Uh, I had that this morning. That's in that ashtray. I had that when I started the show. Great stick. Awesome stick. Great, great stick. Uh, it's a six and a quarter by 47 Corona is the one. Uh, well, it's the one it comes in. Uh, it's an Ecuadorian wrapper with a Dominican binder and filler. And... 
it looks very similar to this other 858 floor, floor finas. The main difference between this one is, well, for me, A, it's a much better smoke than the other ones, but B, it has a red ribbon um, and cedar wrapper on it. And that's how you can identify them. And I'm mentioning that because I've talked to people and said, oh, yeah, I've had the sun grown uh, risotto, blah, blah, blah. And then I find out that, like, no, it wasn't. They just had the regular 858 floor fina. There is more mm. than one. Um, the stick. It, it just it looks awesome. I mean, it's Fuente. Everything I've never had a a low quality Fuente. They're all high quality. Uh, the ones I've had, uh, and I'm not a, a Fuente super fan or anything like that. Uh, actually, there's only a couple of their sticks I really really like. But I will give them credit. This this was a well constructed stick. Um, had minimal veins. Um, the wrapper has like a milk chocolate. Um, not very oily, but it definitely has a milk chocolate tone to it. Um, the thing with these, they no one knows how many are really out there. That's the interesting thing. I did a lot of research on this over the last couple of days. And they, they came out with these in 2002, 2009, and 2012. Um, we know that originally they came out with about 87 boxes. Mm -hmm. And then at events, at, at industry events, they allowed vendors to purchase them if they purchased other things. Yep. But other than that, there's really no, I'm sure Fuente has it, but... There's no public information that I could find on how many of these boxes are actually out there. But that doesn't mean they're hard to find. Right. Because I have been in three shops right here in the state of Rhode Island. I'm sorry, two here and one in Massachusetts that had them. So they're not hard to find. You just got to go in your shop and see if they have them. Uh, but uh, the cold draw, I got, um, not surprisingly, because it has a cedar wrapper, I got a little bit of cedar on the cold draw. Um, hints of coffee again, uh, as in the, in the last one, but quickly as you, you know, I, you, I did a V cut, I lit it and I got coffee, like a subtle, uh, I'm sorry, cocoa. I got a subtle cocoa with it, with the coffee, which was phenomenal. That's that's why I like it. It's not mm -hmm. super strong cocoa, but a little bit, uh, almost like a sweetness, I guess I'd call it. Um, ve very pretty much consistent throughout as far as the, the flavors went uh a little stronger on the coffee notes on the retro hail um which was was very pleasant that's not a bad thing at all a little earthiness in there as well um so not a super complex stick but a i want to say a delicious for me a delicious stick that's what i would call a delicious stick um great flavors throughout awesome experience razor sharp burn for me all the way through Again, speaking to that construction that they have and quality, um, zero canoeing. It was about a 70-minute smoke for me, so it's not like super long or anything. Um, so, I again, because I did end up buying, actually, I bought almost two boxes of these, I gave this a box-worthy yes. uh, rating. Yes. Same thing? Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I agree with everything you said. Um, a couple things flash in my memory as you, as you keep going. Uh, first and foremost, um, I wish list. I wish that Arto Fluente could give a more concrete definition of what's available. Right. Because you kind of have to seek these out. They're not unicorns. They're they, really not. But, but they kind of are. Uh, th a couple of points you bring up. Uh, number one is this is why it's very important. Online has its place, but it's very important for you to develop a relationship with a local tobacconist. 100%. Because if you walk into a humidor or a cigar shop and you walk in and you say, hey, you know, these Alto Fluentes, do you have these in the Rosado wrapper? Sometimes they do. And you just have to ask. And it's not like they're under lock and key, they're not super expensive. They should be in that 10 to 12, maybe 10 to 13, plus whatever your local taxes are. But, you know, it, 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 you just got to develop that relationship. And, the, and, and, and to back that up, to back up what, you're, what you just said, the last time Paul Azadorian appeared on Story Geeks was to talk about that stick. Really? Yes. Yes. And again, as you know, we don't do prep. All right, so I'm just supplying like the like we went to uh, Black Hat, which was in Vegas. It was August of 2019, and Paul and I walk into the into the shop. 
And he's like, yeah, you have any of the Vazada rapper from Arturo Fluente? Oh, no, those go, those go. Okay, fine. We had a customer come, and I've told, I've said this story a million times, so I'm trying to give the abridged version. We had a customer come, they drank, had a stick with us, bing, bang, boom. Me and Paul have a stick, customer leaves. Two minutes later, another customer comes, had a stick, ordered some more drinks. All of a sudden, all of a sudden, the humanoid manager, the same one, wasn't a shift change, wasn't anything, Comes up with the box of the Rosado wrappers. No shit. Yes. So it's one of those things where because there's an unknown and and, and and having a shop, I can attest to this, haven't had a retail shop, there are two companies that are pretty difficult to deal with. One, because there's a threshold of barrier to entry, and one, because it's Arturo Fluente. You can spend five hundred dollars or fifty thousand dollars with Arturo Fluente. Their ordering system has been all over the map. And by the way, it's been like that since nineteen ninety nine wow. that I know of. Right? So it's been twenty one years. Okay? So and and you know something? It's worked for them. So God bless you guys. Okay? I just here to here to give you the facts, right? Yeah. And the other one was Davidoff. And Davidoff, it's because there's a barrier to entry and there's other things and all that, that stuff. And I don't want to. That's another. That's another. That's another thing. But those are like the two companies that, like, they're, they're mysterious. Yeah. They're mysterious companies. And I think the mysterious, at their level, they're not boutique, clearly, right? And at their level, it's like the more mysterious, <laughs> the more mysterious you are. But those Rosado rappers. Are where it's at. Yeah. And all you have to do is go to your local tobacconist and, and, and ask them. And if they say no the first time, continue to ask them. Yeah, I, I would echo echo that, Joe. So I, I was going to give this, this. This leads into two tips I always give people that, you know, again, going back to that renaissance, I've had people come up to me and like, hey, you know, I'm looking for this. I'm looking for that. Go into your shops. You know, I'm all about brick and mortar anyways. But first thing I do when I go into a new shop, I look up, right? I never look at the shelves. Yeah. Right? Always look up because they put the shit that's not selling up there. Or it's their backups too. But sometimes the stuff that's not selling is the stuff you want. Um, Good point. Right? Good point. I always look up when I go into Humidor because that's where you find the gems. The other thing is exactly what Joe said. Ask. And ask more than once because I've gone into a shop and, I, and you know, that story you just told about Vegas is kind of similar. I've gone into a shop, asked someone, they had no clue, right? Because it wasn't a shop owner. It was just a staff member. And then I've gone back and I, I, appro- I found the shop owner and asked them and they found it. Yep. You know, so perfect tie into this, this review I just did. You know, I just bought, I think, a, a almost half a box of these 858s because I walked into a shop in New Hampshire um, and I asked. They weren't. They were not on the shelf. Of course they're not. They were not on the shelf. Right, right. So I said, oh, I see that you have the 858s. Do you have exactly what Joe said? Do you have the Rosados? Oh, in fact, I do. And she reached up and it was on the top shelf. Yeah, they freaking get the step stool. They reach up on there and they get it because they're sitting there because those are, I don't want to say like, you, you know gotta, what she said? You kind of got to be in a no. She said, people don't know what they are. Right. That's what she said. Right. Right. And that goes back to our, our, a lot of discussions we've had already on here, um, even in my short stint here, about getting it in their hands, right, and getting them to understand what it is. Right. That's what she said. She goes, people don't know what they are. She had, you know, Fuente, Don Carlos, I, the shark, another very popular stick, but yet not mainstream kind mm-hmm. of thing. Yeah. And. That too was up on it was up on the top shelf. So right. you know, walk in the humidor, look at the top shelf, ask questions, ask more than once because you never know who the hell you're dealing with. Um, sometimes they're just a staff member that's maybe filling in or whatever. I might not know. They might not know. Or that might be like the owner's stash that he or she passes out to their customers. And, yeah, and it could I've be run on into that. Not, yeah, it could be on a do not touch list. Yeah, it was on a do not touch list. It's but, true. I ran know, into that. I mean, when the bills freaking six change. 
She appeared with those Rosado wrappers. I was in the humidor, and I, <laughs> Joe is spot on on everything he's saying today. I'm just, I'm just telling you how it is, man. See, it's kind of like it's kind of like McAuliffe cigars, right? They they don't like they don't like to, to to see how it is, right? And it is what it is. Like 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 I this is my experience, and this is what it is. Here comes the hate email. I love it. Joe H at StogieGeeks.com, in case you forgot, right? <laughs> right? I'm just saying, like, like uh, it is what it is, right? We walked in there, you know, Paul walks in there, he's got a Star Wars t-shirt on, I walk in, I got a Star Wars, he just came off the flight, like, it was so crazy. Paul was so excited about this cigar that he had to come on Stogie. I remember this episode, it was the last time he was on, it was August of last year, right? And and, and he's like, I, I got to talk about our experience over at Black Hat, and the funny thing is, we walk in, you know, we had just traveled, and we literally walked in, and hats off to Johnny, who is, we always give reference to Johnny, like, it was so crazy, Paul and I got off the plane, and he says to Sam, our director of operations at the time, right, uh, there, and says to Johnny, you guys all set setting up, they were setting up the room, they, Johnny and crew, even took my luggage to the room. Wow. Well, I could get on an Uber with Paul to go to the cigar shop to meet with the customers. Right. And do that there. And, 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 and like, I didn't have a chance to set up. So we're, we're still in, like, airplane gear. And here we are in Vegas, quote, unquote. You know, it's supposed to be fancy and all of that stuff. And, and they judge the book by its cover. That's a big lesson for people. Yeah. Never judge the book by its cover. Okay. And never, always ask twice. There you go. Let's move on. Because yeah. if we keep going at this rate, you're going to review one, I'm going to review one, and we're going to run out of time. So, All right, go ahead. You're up. That's the lessons. Oh, I'm up already? Oh, crap. All right. Oh, yeah. That's right. We did yours. How do, how do yours and Drew's always turn into mine? That's crazy. You know, one one last note on mine. <laughs> and I'm, I'm saying this knowing that Joe's about to rip me apart. but Or maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I could be wrong. I do have uh, a cigar dagger so for nubs, and I've only used it once, and I've used it on this. This is really the only st I smoked that sucker right yes. down till I can't hold it anymore. There's nothing there but ash. Yes. I love this cigar. It is a good cigar. Nelson had gifted me two today, and one's gone, and it is. <laughs> the other one will not make sunset. And by the way, that's 5 p.m. That will not. Uh, and the first thing I said to Nelson, he gave him to me in like a, you know, he, God, you're such a cigar geek. It's so funny. You, you give it to me in like a, a sealed pack with, with a bovida. With, with a bovida pack. <laughs> like, I'm going to keep this freaking thing. It's not going in the Ziploc. This thing didn't even make my Ziploc baggie. It didn't. They will be gone by today. And they should be. And they should be. If you got them smoking. And they should be. If you have them If you smoking. got them smoking. Smoke um, what you like. Absolutely. Absolutely. I don't even know what to take a sip of yet. Let me finish this. This is where my ADD can get taken care of. Hold on. This is like old country buffet of booze over I here know, right now. I know. It's bad. It's bad. <laughs> okay. I had the La Aurora. I've been on a La Aurora kick. Yeah. A little right? bit. Um, it started. And with me, it's themed, right? I don't know. It just, it's just the way it hits me, right? Um... If you want me to get on your kick, send me sticks. I might get on your kick. I don't know. Right? Um, it started with the La Aurora 107, Nick, uh, the, the Nicaraguan cigar. Heard mixed reviews from that, from the shops. Mm. But I went back and I was like, oh, man, I forgot how good this stick was. Let me go get it again. La Aurora, Preferitos, Cameroon. Now... Johnny, our awesome producer, it he loves the Cameroon Lancero. Lara Cameroon Lancero is jam. Jam. Absolute jam. All right. Um, this here, the Lara Preferitos Cameroon. Um it is a uh six and seven eighths by forty eight Cameroon wrapper, binder and filler filler uh Dominican uh complexity, I gave it an eight. Flavor and balance, I gave them both nines, right? Wow. Uh, to me, you, you get, like, toasty notes of grass mixed with aged tobacco and a little bit of brown sugar. It's a sweeter, wow. it's a sweeter blend of, um, if you were going to go with, like, a Connecticut Broadleaf or the Maduro from the Preferito series, right? Uh, 
Retro Hales deliver classic Cameroon pepper. I mean, like, like you're just like Retro Hale for days. But it's but it's not like a pepper that like makes. It's not a strong pepper, um, but it certainly is there, and you really get a sweet kind of earthy core. Yeah, does that make sense? So um, from there, uh, absolutely box worthy cigar. Completely enjoy them. Um, La Aurora next door, and as well as some of the. The, you don't have to get them in the preferito size. You can get them in kind of like a Robusto size as well. That breaks down the actual different blends. And a lot of that has to deal with, I've done like the Manuel Noah testing kit and all of that. This dates back 2018, 17, right? It was a very popular tasting series that, that La Aurora did from a marketing blitz perspective. Super cool. I've learned so much about that. Uh, I've taken notes. That's where you smoke, like, uh, just the Cameroon. Yeah. Just the, all the different wrappers there. Um, super cool. But um, you can really, really taste it. And I don't know if I can really, really taste it because I've taken that testing kit or blending kit series and I associate it with La Aurora. But I've actually taken that series in the Jose Blanco blending seminar series and combine them into my Stogie Geeks reviews. Mm-hmm. But that being said, um, the Preferito size, it's a weird size. You know, it kind of starts thinner and it's got a fat it's center. It's tapered. It's tape. You know what I mean? It, 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 you know, it, it's golfable. It's probably not fishingable. You know what I mean? Um, Love these new words. Yeah, I'm creating new words today. It's a good time. Fishingable. Yeah, maybe you got some more. I'll get some more. Hold on a second. <laughs> Yeah, who knows what we're gonna say in the next freaking couple of minutes. <laughs> but uh yeah. So uh yeah, definitely it's box worthy. Check it out. La Aurora, Preferitos Cameroon. You won't be disappointed. Outstanding. You have a stick, I have a stick, and we're almost out of time to wrap up. Yeah, I got my last stick is the uh crown head Las Calavetas. Uh it's a five by five by forty eight. Uh they call it an L C forty eight. I just want to say I'm a fanboy. Oh, are you? Yes. Oh, <laughs> Well, you'd be interested to find out how I got this. Um, Ecuadorian wrapper, Nicaraguan binder filler. And this was actually just a surprise smoke for me. I was in a, uh, a, I went to check out a new shop, um, actually here in Rhode Island, but close to my, my home in Massachusetts. And I saw it on the shelf. I've seen these everywhere. They're on online retailers everywhere. You see them all the time. Um, I knew a little bit about it. I know they come out with these. They come out with them every year. Um, you know, I'll talk a little bit about what it is. It's it's like a Day of the Dead themed cigar. Um, they've been coming out with them since 2014, I believe. Um, and they come in four Vitolas every time they come out. And, you know, every year they do a different run. And it's to celebrate the people that have passed in the previous year. Um, that's how they do it. But anyway, so I was in the shop. I saw it. Um, I grabbed this LC48. I'm like, let me try one of these things every they're always advertised everywhere um so it was awesome it was awesome yes it was a really really good stick it's a treat and 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 they don't fly off the shelf only some people those are no yeah and whatnot but to follow crown heads and be what they represent yeah you know what i mean like super cool stick yeah it was it was really good um, I got, uh, you know, some, some, some coffee again, that, that dry fruit is almost a theme here today with a little bit of pepper. There was a little bit of pepper in this one. I'm not a big pepper guy. Um, obviously Joe is, but it, it wasn't super strong pepper, but it was a little bit of pepper, just enough for it to be perfect. It, it blended well with the other, uh, other notes. Um, the finish drops the pepper a little bit and then you just end up with a, almost like a, a sweet ending, not super sweet. Um, but a, a nice sweet ending there. Um, this was another number for me. I it was that good. I like wanted. I didn't bring out the stick. I didn't bring out the dagger. But I smoked this sucker as far as I could with with my fingers. Um, it, I didn't want to put it down. It was just like you ever smoke a stick like you just don't want to put it down. You don't want it to end. That's what penetrates a higher rating for me. Yeah. Like when you're like holy shit, I need another inch. I know yeah. that's what she said. I get it. Yeah. But I'm just saying like. Like like wow like I wow yeah yeah 
You know what's funny is Joe, Joe said several times today, like, there's no show prep, and it's like everything we've been reviewing is like gr great reviews. Like, sure. All sticks, and like this one, this is not one of my favorite sticks or anything. Well, now it is, but it wasn't a stick. I'm like, oh, yeah, I smoked this all the time. This was something new I smoked, and it, it just, it was great. Um, perfect construction, no relights, awesome burn. Just, I, I mean, again, all high quality sticks that we're, we're reviewing today. Um, little side note, and, and I'm going to toot my horn a little bit because I scored. Um, they do a sampler every year, so they come in four Vitolas, but you can get a sampler of each Vitola, and I got a 2017, a 2018, a 2019, and 2020 coming my way that I got from a, a retailer down in, like, North Carolina. That's the other thing. You want a stick? Call around to brick and mortars across the country. Just look it up. Sure. You can support brick and mortars without setting foot in their door, and I, I do it all the time. That's true, and if you want to get in on, on some of that action, uh, email Nelson at stogiegeeks.com and he'll be able to uh turn you on to that yeah because yeah you can like i said i'm not really a stick chaser but i've i've always had the luxury to have friends or people close to me who are stick chasers right like you like i'm like i i was like nelson uh here here's a label find me this yeah nelson uh get me some of these me call this. me the cigar hunter you know what i mean <laughs> and 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 go for it like you know because it's gig it's what he likes to do yeah you yeah, know. I am a little geeky about, like I said, if it's hard to find, I'm going to try to find it. Yeah. So he's right. Yeah. Nelson at StogieGeeks.com. You ever want some tips on how to find things that you can't find anymore mm. or something that's rare? Let let me know. Well, I'm going to make your life easy. I'm calling Nesta Placencia on a cell phone after this episode, and I'm going to get make sure that we get the oxes. Dude, if you can get me an ox. Then you better not. You better enjoy that here on the show. You cannot. I will only smoke it on the yeah, show. Yeah, you cannot use that, abuse that privilege. <laughs> I I will smoke it on the show. You don't like live reviews, so I'll, I'll review be, it the next time. I'll be like the former president. You will be fired if you abuse that privilege. <laughs> fired. Uh, you have to respect the platform. It's we're only here for a platform. Yeah. So I do recommend this. Um, I gave this a box split. Um. I don't know. It's it's great. Yes. But, I mean, it's not an 858 Florfina. It's just not. Yep. You know what it is, honestly? I think from our perspective, when we give box split, that's why I, I usually give a lot of box split with friends. I'm into the story. Yeah. Right? It's not that, like, it sucks and I would only have 10. It's like it's a box split because from our perspective, we get bombarded by all this other cool innovative stuff that you're like yeah you know i i i'd smoke 10 and and and, and they are good box splits a good rating i mean i yeah. i created my own rating called pothole filler but yeah that's true yeah it, it didn't make the website yet i won't say what is in there but there's a couple of sticks there's a couple in there. you've you've yeah. mentioned that already <laughs> you've mentioned that already well my is that your final stick that is sir and no more news no, that was uh, we were just talking about the Placentia. Nelson, Nelson, short news. Week. Short and sweet. Everybody's been chilling this week. Like All me, right. short and sweet. Absolutely. Uh, I had the Mason Dis the Mason Dixon project to buy crown heads. Mm. That's ironic. Uh, it is a six by fifty two. Uh, it's a Connecticut broadleaf binder and filler on Nicaraguan complexity. I I I gave it a seven. Uh, flavor, I gave it a six. Hmm. Uh, balance, I gave it an eight. Um, it's it's available in the uh, six by fifty two only Toro. Starts off with some leather with a combination of uh, some cocoa and espresso uh, that tend to be dominant, but you got to work it right. And because you got to work it, it like it left me wanting more. That's all. So when you say you had to work it, are you saying, because I, I've had sticks like this where you almost feel like you're putting effort into finishing it? No, no, Is no. Is that no. what you mean? No. What I oh, mean okay. by like like to try to get the flavors, I'm trying to do like a retro hail. Right. Trying to, and, and like. You're focused. And, and, and my Rolodex of experience, right, which we all have them. They're called palettes, right? And our Rolodex of experience where like you want, like you're waiting for something to happen. Right. And it doesn't happen. And so I gave it a fiver. Like, it's cool. 
Like it's super cool stick. Your stick was a better choice for sure. But um there you go. I gave it a fiver. Yeah. Check them out. They're pretty cool. Uh yeah, I'm gonna try that Aurora you recommended. Oh that sounds yeah. that sounds good. I haven't well, had that. Well, we're about to wrap up the show, and when we do, you'll be able to have that. Outstanding. I'm going to the perks of Stogie Geeks. Yeah, yeah. We're gonna go in there and put on a Stogie Geeks tab. I like it. I like it. <laughs> That's going to be a good afternoon, for sure. Remember, Stogie Geeks, we keep the conversation going all week long. You visit stogiegeeks.com, facebook.com forward slash stogiegeeks. Email all of your complaints to drew at stogiegeeks.com. And behind every cigar, we, we want to remind you that there is a story worth knowing. Get out there, call your local brick and mortar. Ask them if they have those Rosado wrappers. If they don't, Tell them they should get them. Any or ask me. Things? <laughs> That's it. Stogie Geeks, episode 347. Over and out. We'll see you next time. Peace. Peace.